What is the most important work we do as Christians? Some would say it's evangelism, sharing the good news of Jesus with the world. Others might say it's serving the poor or deepening the faith of others through discipleship. Some say it's studying scripture and learning the deep truths of God. These are wonderful things that we are called to engage by Christ, but none of them is foundational. None is at the very heart of our Christian life. Instead, both the Old and the New Testaments affirm that our highest call is to love the Lord with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. But what does that look like? How do we do it? How do we actively love God? In John 15, Jesus uses a wonderful metaphor to help us understand what it looks like. He describes himself as a vine and us as branches. He said this, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This call to abide is a powerful and beautiful image. It not only means to be connected, but it means to be dependent. A branch by itself cannot bear fruit. It draws its life and nutrients from the vine. The vine is what makes the fruit grow. This metaphor is really important for us to understand. You see, we often think that our energy and focus should be on producing good fruit. All the things I mentioned at the beginning, from mission to service, discipleship. In Galatians 5, Paul describes the fruit of the believer as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. We're usually fixated on how well we're producing those things or not producing them and in what quantity. But in John 15, Jesus says it's just the opposite. A branch doesn't produce fruit by focusing on the fruit. It produces fruit by remaining connected to the vine. Our first and most important work as a disciple of Jesus is to abide in him. That means cultivating a deep, rich, rooted communion with him. And as we abide in him, we'll discover that as a friend of mine likes to joke, fruit happens. A good tree will bear good fruit, a bad tree will bear bad fruit. An apple tree produces apples, an orange tree produces oranges. And if we're deeply connected to Jesus, we will naturally and automatically produce Jesus fruit. Good fruit of the Holy Spirit of God. The primary way we abide in Jesus is through prayer. As understood in scripture, prayer is far more than just talking to God. It's more than just communication. It's also communion. That means abiding in God's presence even when no words are being used. Think of that scene at the Last Supper when the Apostle John laid his head on Jesus' chest as they reclined at the table. Nothing was spoken, but John was abiding with Jesus. Let me tell you a few stories that I may have shared in the past to help you understand what abiding can look like. I've told these before, but I hope they're helpful. In 1982, Mother Teresa gave an interview to Dan Rather, and he asked her, when you pray, what do you say to God? And she said, I don't say anything, I just listen. Okay, Dan Rather said in response, when God speaks to you, what does he say? Mother Teresa said, he doesn't say anything, he just listens. Dan Rather was baffled by this and Mother Teresa finally said to him, if you don't understand that, I can't explain it to you. Or consider the example of Billy Graham. He was scheduled to be interviewed on the Today Show. When he arrived in the studio, one of the producers informed his assistant that a private room had been set aside for him to pray before the broadcast. The assistant thanked the producer but said that Mr. Graham would not need the room. He explained that, quote, Mr. Graham started praying when he got up this morning. He prayed while eating breakfast. He prayed in the car on the way over, and he'll probably be praying all the way through the interview. Mother Teresa and Billy Graham understood what it meant to abide in Christ, to stay connected to him through prayer in all that they did, drawing their strength from him so that they could produce the fruit of his kingdom. They demonstrated what Thomas Kelly called simultaneity. It's kind of a fancy word that simply means to live on two levels at the same time. Here's how he explained it. There's a way of ordering our mental life on more than one level at once. On one level, we may be thinking, discussing, seeing, calculating, meeting all the demands of external affairs, but deep within, behind the scenes, at a profounder level, we may also be in prayer and adoration, song and worship, and a gentle receptiveness to divine breathings. The secular world of today only values and cultivates the first level, believing that this is where the real business of mankind is done. But we know that the deep level of prayer 
is the most important thing in the world. It is this deep level that the real business of life is determined. We're called to many good works by Jesus, mission, discipleship, service, but all of these things begin with abiding, with learning to commune with him in all that we do so that it is his presence and power and his spirit that flows through us to produce the good fruit in our lives.